Hi, this is Freddie Spence reporting after the 2017 U.S. Grand Prix. Let's talk about one of my favorite events is, of course, U.S. Grand Prix. Uh, because for many reasons, growing up as a kid, I could only imagine that there would ever be a Grand Prix in my country and that someday I would get to race in, in one, and, and I obviously did. So it's great that it's at a facility like Austin, which is near my home in Shreveport, Louisiana. And the racetrack itself looks beautiful, but it's surprising that it's, it's kind of degraded so quickly over these five years. If you look at what the riders went through this weekend, you really wouldn't want to have to ride a Grand Prix bike, especially a MotoGP bike or the older days of 500 around a track that was so bumpy and inconsistent. And the guys talked about that, and it made their weekend very challenging. But... It was the same for everyone, as my dad used to say, and so the riders had to get used to it. If you look at the weather conditions from Friday to Saturday, on Friday, the track temperature, they said, was around 42 degrees. On Saturday morning, it was a lot cooler, and you saw a lot of crashes. So I think it was a combination of things. One, as we talked about the track conditions and it being inconsistent, very bumpy, which affected the bikes in the corners. The bumps affect not only the stability, but the contact patch. And that's what I think was causing some of the problems, especially on corner entry, because a lot of those bumps are caused by the cars. They run a lot of sports cars there. Of course, they have the Formula One race, but they do run a lot of cars there. A lot of manufacturers go there. And so on the entry to the corners, there's these stutter bumps. The riders go in, own the brakes, the bike is loaded, they tilt the bike in, they misjudge it just a little bit and hit the bump wrong and unloads the front and they crash. So it's a combination of things that cause that. Also, the tires and the Michelins and how they're working. There's been a lot of talk this season about that soft construction. I've talked about it. I've talked about how it's probably affected Valentino a little bit. It seems like he's got that working in the right way and these adjusted uh, the bike be able to deal with a little bit. But there's certainly that. The Michelin tires, they seem to be very sensitive to the temperature, but also uh, the soft, medium, and hard. There was even talk a little bit, there's not a whole lot of difference between those three. There seems to be more uh, difference in how the bikes react to them, because uh, you got the Hondas on the very hard. Most, most of the riders were running mediums, and even some uh, run the soft. And so there's, I think, a combination of things were causing, especially those crashes on Saturday morning. Now, the riders, Mark Marquez. Mark Marquez, he talked about, well, he had those two crashes. If you watch the broadcast, he had the two crashes on Saturday morning. He, he did talk about how that he needed to go back to that mindset like he had last year. Remember in 2016, he kind of settled down compared to what he was doing in 15 and all the problems he had with Valentino in the beginning of the year that kind of came to a head later on as the year went on. He really was pushing a little too much. He, now, he's always crashed a lot. If you look at even in 13, he crashed pretty much every race leading in practice, but not in the race, in practice leading... Uh, to that first world championship. So that's not uncommon for him, but he can't afford to make those mistakes in the race. And so he said I was that he wanted to go back to that mindset like he had last year, and we saw that in qualifying, where he kind of let the qualifying session come to him. Maverick put in that quick lap, and then he came out on the very end, in that last lap, put in his lap to get pole position. And I think that is a turning point for him that was really, really a positive. Now, Maverick Rinaldi's. That incident that he had with Valentino on Saturday in practice, I, I, I really don't understand that. And, and I don't think Valentino even knew what that was about. And he said that after, after qualifying, um, you know, he didn't see anything. He didn't know what his issue was. So Maverick, I think, was maybe starting to feel the pressure just a little bit. And we saw that in that, that reaction. And, and maybe that contributed a little bit what happened in the race on Sunday. Don't know. Because there was a lot of crashes anyway. But it certainly did change things for him. And you, like I said, I think we were seeing a little bit of, of that pressure of maybe wanting to or needing or the expectation winning three races in a row. But I've been there before myself. And, and those points where you make mistakes... You kind of get that out of the way can lead to more positives, and we'll see what happens once you get to Jerez. Now, Danny Petrosa, what a great start for him. 
uh, in the race to get up front, which he does pretty well if he can get a good start, get in that lead group. He pretty much stays there as he showed, and that's going to be a great confidence boost for him. So um, for him and Mark, the two Hondas up front with all the issues they've had this year, no one finishing on a podium in the first two races to finish in first and third was great. Now, Johan Zarco, that incident in the race with Valentino, I understand what exactly, I mean, Valentino, there's nothing he could do. I mean, he didn't even see Johan and he, when he turned in. So if Johan's going to make that pass in the future, and Valentino kind of hinted at this, make it, get by the rider. It's, you don't want to get in there and bump someone out of the way. Get by so he, you know you're there with these bikes at the speed they're going, at the level it is, at the very elite level. Um, you need to be a little more precise with that move. And so that should be a good lesson for him. Now that three-tenths uh, three -tenths of a second penalty they gave Valentino, why did that happen? Well, you can conjecture, but I, I kind of have a feeling when they watched the video uh, when Valentino made the evasive move, he didn't get out of the throttle. He accelerated through and got a little bit of a jump. There was really nothing he could do. I think that's why they penalized him, because if he would have lifted the bike up, kind of rolled off and tried to make the right, I don't think anything would have happened. But fortunately, I don't think they should have given the penalty, actually, but fortunately, it didn't matter. He beat Danny Petrosa by more than three tenths. It would have been an issue, of course, I think, if, and it should have been, if he would have lost second place just because uh, Danny was, you know, that three tenths penalty, which he shouldn't have, shouldn't have had. Cal Crutchlow, another good ride for him. Uh, very consistent with the Hondas. And so all three of the Hondas were up there and, and did a pretty good job. And um, that was great. Last but not least, Valentino Rossi. Who would have thought with all the issues that he had in winter testing, all the issues that he's had in free practice, that you would have looked now at three races, three podiums, and he's leading the world championship. Um, and like I said, he had that incident with Maverick, nothing, he didn't do anything, and Zarco, same thing. He's just doing his job. It's great to see. I know everybody out there is really excited to, be to see Valentino do that, especially with what happened two years ago. Uh, at the end of the season when he was leading the championship the whole way. It would be great this year because it's just his attitude. He's going out there doing a great job, struggling, but on Sunday afternoons getting the job done. So it's, it's really great to see. But I think everybody was expecting the great battle between Maverick and Mark to finally happen on Sunday. It didn't because of the crash. Let's see what happens at Jerez. It would be great to see it there. See you next time. Thank you.